The plaques to your left and right are dedicated to the history of sport. Every winner of a 1936 personal gold medal is honoured here. At the top left-hand side, you will find the name of a legendary US American athlete, Jesse Owens. He was the only sportsman who managed to bring four gold medals home. With his first-class performance, he had become the favourite of the stadium and was celebrated enthusiastically by the Berlin audience which in itself is remarkable, as Jesse Owens was an Afro-American and the Olympic Games took place in a country governed by the racial laws of Nuremberg. These laws not only discriminated against Jews, but also against people of different skin colour. The popularity of Owens shows that the National Socialists made an effort to let the otherwise omnipresent racial hatred recede into the background during the short duration of the Games. After all, they wanted to create a positive image abroad and make the best of the publicity the Games offered them. The highlight of the opening day in 1936 was the Olympic torch relay, which was an invention of the Berlin Organisational Committee. For the first time, the Olympic flame was carried over 3,000 kilometres by more than 3,000 international sportsmen to the city hosting the Games. The flame was welcomed to Berlin's city centre with festivities in the Lustgarten. A last sportsman brought the flame into the stadium via the eastern curved stand, ran up the marathon staircase and ceremonially lit the fire in the tripod cauldron in front of you. The audience and the IOC embraced this enthusiastically and the torch relay has been an inherent part of the opening programme since then. Nowadays, the flame is also ignited on special events, giving the architecture of the stadium a very special atmosphere at night. Guests frequently want to know whether the original cauldron was not bigger. This demonstrates how strongly the image of these games continues to be dominated by Leni Riefenstahl's two-part documentary about them. The filmmakers' aesthetics often used an extreme view from below, greatly increasing the impression of the monumental architecture of the stadium. Without a doubt, Leni Riefenstahl wrote history with her innovative filming techniques. But there is also no doubt that she was strongly involved in the criminal system of National Socialism, for which she was never willing to take responsibility. Many other media were used to win over the public to the games, and thus new standards in radio and television broadcasting were set. A specially installed radio service spread news of the Olympics worldwide, except for Australia. Television was a brand new technology. Although there were practically no private television sets in Germany at the time, the images nonetheless found their viewers. About 162,000 people watched the sporting competitions in special television lounges, which had been set up in post offices. The 1936 Olympic Games was the first sporting event to be broadcast live. <laughs>